Welcome back everybody to another fun gear review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hudson Bay tobacco box. This particular one is made by TDC. Uh, TDC is a company, they do a lot of black powder, uh, turn of the century type products, stuff like that here in America. They've been around for a while. I got this a particular box I want to say three or four years ago I uh, had a buddy of mine order it for me because at the time I didn't even have a credit card so it was a while back it's just now starting to get a little bit of a patina on it if you look right there you can see the TDC logo stamped in the bottom and that's a natural patina if you get on YouTube and start searching for Hudson Bay tobacco boxes, you'll see a lot of videos of guys forcing a patina on these boxes. And hey, if that's what you want to do to make it look old, go right ahead. I'd rather have it age with me, hopefully in a graceful manner. Now before we get into some more details in this box, I want to briefly touch on the history of these boxes. Now. This is traditionally known as the Hudson Bay tobacco box because Hudson Bay was the largest player in the North American fur trade and this was one of the items that they made not only for trade but for sale for people. Uh, the fur trade in America went on from roughly 1670 to 1870 so long time there's a lot of antique ones out there. I have never held an antique one in my hands. I've seen plenty of pictures though and this is pretty accurate. Uh, there were other companies in this fur trade that made these boxes too. Northwest Company was one, but the biggest was Hudson Bay and the one they talk about a lot in the history is Hudson Bay. So thus, the Hudson Bay Tobacco Box. This particular one is made of brass. It is pretty nice. Uh, TDC offers four different styles of this box. The brass, which you see in front of you, for $31. German silver, aka nickel silver, for $36. If you don't know what nickel silver is, it is an alloy of copper, zinc, and nickel. It's very hard and it doesn't tarnish. So if you want something that looks kind of like silver but won't tarnish, that might be the one you would go for. Uh, they also offer it in copper for $36 and a tin plate version for $25.50. They also offer an engraving surface where they will engrave here on this little lid that covers the glass a Ferdy Liss for I think ten more dollars. Now if you've never seen one of these boxes, they're pretty cool. They open up, that comes off, and you have a six power magnifier here that's primarily used for fire starting, but you can use it to, in, to uh, increase the size of maybe newsprint or something like that you're reading. Now, these make great containers for a fire kit, which is primarily what a lot of people use them for, as well as tobacco. In those days, everybody kind of rolled their own cigarettes or smoked out of a pipe, unless you were rich. If you were rich, you were going ahead and you were smoking cigars, but that was mostly for city folk. Now, you can see the interior is pretty decent size. I can fit that PS Cook uh, fire steel in there, no problem. You could fit a flint in here, tinder and everything, and boom, you've got a kit to go. Now, let's talk dimensions real quickly here. This is four and five sixteenths inch long, going from here to here. It is three inches wide. If you measure from the surface of this table to the very top of this cap here, it is one and three sixteenths inch high. Internally, 
the storage area inside here is roughly five eighths of an inch. In metric, 10.95 centimeters from here to here, 7.62 centimeters from here to here, uh, three centimeters tall from the top here to the bottom, and internally 1.58 centimeters internal volume. Okay, let me grab my scale and we will weigh this bad boy. Let's uh, get this started here. Oops. You know what? We're going to have to reposition that because I can't. There we go. Now we can see the numbers. Let me re zero that. All right. We're going to do it in pounds first. Two and seven eighths of an ounce or. Come on, 83 grams. So, not terribly heavy. Now, I have used this for a kit for a while. It fits in the pocket very nicely. You can see, you know, via my hand, it fits right in my jean pocket just perfectly. The magnifying glass does work for starting primitive fires, solar ignition. I would say my biggest complaint with this, my biggest negative, it is not waterproof, okay? Let me show you something here. So you got this glass in here, right? Oh, now it won't shake. Hear that? The glass actually moves because the glass is just lightly crimped in here. There's the crimp marks. Now, when you put this lid on here, that's a friction fit, and then this lid is a friction fit. Water can get in through here and through here. Now, if you only had to worry about this part of it, you can run a piece of electrical tape or duct tape around that, and it would seal it up, but you still have water that can get through here. So that's an issue. I did see on a muzzle loading forum where a guy took this and he heated up some beeswax and he got this warm, not hot, just warm, and he put beeswax right around here to seal this up and that eliminated that, that rattle with the glass and made this waterproof. So if you wanted to do that, you could, plus any excess beeswax, you can clean off the glass and still use it as solar ignition. Uh, these are really popular with people that, you know, get into the black powder and the reenactment. I got one because I love history, and I've read a ton about early America, the fur trade, and all that. All right. Overall, 31 bucks. yes, I think it's a good deal. If you're into the more traditional stuff for a bushcraft kit, these are very nice. They make a great gift. Um, you can probably take this to a good jeweler and you can have the back of it engraved with someone's name and such. Overall, yeah, you know, I bought it. For the reasons I bought it. Are there better modern alternatives? Yes, there absolutely is. Um, <laughs> I mean, as simple as, you know, the tins I use to make my char cloth. That's another thing. You're not going to be making char cloth in this. The glass would not survive it. And yeah, you're gonna be poking holes in something you just paid 30 bucks, 31 bucks for. No thanks. So you're not gonna be making char cloth in it. This is to hold your fire making kit, your tinder, your primitive kit. If you want to see this do some solar work, I got a video on solar ignition that should be going up the same time as this. So I hope to see you over there to check that out. Overall, thumbs up.
but I like historical stuff. You may not. And uh, that's all I got to say on the Hudson Bay Tobacco Tin. I hope to see you, you right there, I'm talking to you, out in the woods, maybe doing some primitive bushcraft with a flintlock. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you for watching.